can say, look, we live in a secular world where we like to make sense of the world using science and our rationality. And we don't want to kind of subscribe to this ancient idea of, you know, kind of engaging with religion, etc. So maybe religions are just a ploy used by ancient people to regulate the societies they were in. Understandable. It's a very important challenge. Saying that the religions were really a ploy used by earlier mankind to try and regulate the society, behave well with each other, to become more civilized. So it was a ploy. This is a very serious challenge. And this challenge cannot be put aside. It's true, isn't it? Think about it. The religions have, in a way, organized human beings to organ- in, live in a particular, for like a most, very kind of ethical and moral way. That's perfectly fine. But there's a deeper idea that comes from Hinduism, speciality of Hinduism. He says, at best, this secular way of living with each other is called the golden rule, by the way. Idea which was kind of infused and put into society by Confucius, a Chinese thinker. He said, the best rule we can adopt to how we live with other human beings is called the golden rule. And the British Humanist Association have adopted as the main ethical teaching. Do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. Sounds so clever. So I will not steal from you, you don't steal from me. So we become ethical. We behave well with each other without God or religion. Sounds like a good idea, isn't it? Golden rule, how to live with each other. Hindus say, no, that is a good way to start. It's not enough. At best, you tell you how to do commerce with the rest of humanity, how to interact with other human beings. At best, that's all it can do. Give you a commercial way of looking at other human beings and how you interact with them. You give me this, I give you this. It's a commercial enterprise. The thing that comes out, the depth of Hinduism says, no, 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 not just learning to live with each other. The golden rule, learning to live for each other. You say, how can you do that? The British humanists have no answer. How can you live for others? This is what religion teaches. He said, look, it's one thing to do commerce with each other. I won't step on you, you don't step on me. Fair enough. But the better thing is, when I see myself reflected in you, then I see your trouble as my trouble. I see your pleasure as my pleasure. I see your pain as my pain. When I see myself reflect on the human beings, then I'm learning to live for each other, not just with each other, but for each other. This is the beauty, the tremendous idea. And this is what I try to take humanists says, look, this is the difference between you and us. At best, you can teach how to live with each other. I'm telling you how to live for each other. There is no equivalent in your humanist philosophy. How can you live for others? I'm saying, this is what I'm insisting on. The reason why you must live for each other is because the thing that's within you, expressing itself through these eyes, is looking out to other human beings. The same one is looking through all these eyes. So I'm linked with you at the deeper spiritual level, not at the material level like Richard Dawkins, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, something deep within us, expressing itself here, expressing itself there. So I'm stuck with the rest of the living kingdom. So I have no choice but to live for each other rather than live, just do a commerce with other human beings. This is a beautiful question to explore. Free e-learning course in Hinduism. To register, please visit www.hindu-academy.com. Talks on Hinduism. Sponsored by People Care. Encouraging caring for the elderly in their own homes. For more information, please visit peoplecare.com.